What's going on guys? Today I'm going to give you guys a little video on uh, spur basics. Different types of spurs, applications for them. Um, you know, just an overall view of different types of spurs that you can look at getting out there and what they're used for. So let's start off with a pretty basic entry level set of spurs, nothing fancy. It's going to be little inexpensive for somebody that's just starting to get into horsemanship, um, horseback riding, so on and so forth. <clears throat> so I have today a pair of my uh, wife's spurs. And you see the profile, nice little down shank, small rowel, you know, roughly about the size of my thumb, palm, pad of my thumb here. <clears throat> Swivel full size <clears throat> excuse me full size button for just your normal spur straps that you'll find at any ranch farm supply store you know um, they are a woman's set of spurs so they're smaller on the heel than a men's set of spurs would be um, you'll notice this set of spur does not have a spur lip it's just a straight drop shank so We'll get into spur lip here in a second, but so this is your very entry level basic set of spurs. And I'm talking about if you were to go down to say a farm and ranch store like we have here, Big R, or I guess it's Coastal now, or Wilco. You know, you can look up Coastal, Farm and Ranch, Wilco, you'll see what I'm talking about. So moving on from this set of spurs. Is going to be the ones that I ride. And you can tell they're quite a bit larger as they are a men's spur. Um, let's get a little closer view on these. <clears throat> so on these, they have a nice silver tooling. This is uh, hand engraved silver here. Um, obviously a full size button that fits a normal spur strap. These are spur straps that my father made when he first got into leather work. It's got elk head um, hand carved into this. So then you'll notice the rowel. Much many more points and a much larger size for first comparison with my thumb here. And a lot of people will sit there and tell you that <clears throat> the bigger rowels are abusive or they're just not necessary necessary excuse me when in reality it really in reality this smaller rowel with less points is gonna be more aggressive than this bigger rowel if you think of pressure wise so pounds per square inch you've got less points on this rowel and they're smaller so you're going to have more pressure on fewer points. So that's going to increase your pounds per square inch of pressure wise. Where if you take this bigger rowel here, see how I've got a lot more rowels or points on this rowel distributing the pressure. They're not very aggressive. They might look it, but they're not. It's actually a little bit less harsh on a horse than say a five point star rowel. <clears throat> so going into a little more profile, these don't quite have the drop shank like the other rowels did. So a little more straight out, but here is what I was talking about with the spur lip. See that right there. What that's gonna do is that's gonna cradle the back of your jean and it's not going to let your jeans ride into the rowel and cover up the rowel so your the back of your jean is just going to cradle right in here and it will never come into the rowel so this one has an option that's kind of smashed to put jingle bobs on that's just a little accessory you know some guys like them some guys don't i'm a fan of them myself i just haven't put any on yet so this is just your basic cowboy buckaroo spur 
you know, a lot of guys, they'll be riding fancier spurs. <clears throat> I've seen a lot fancier spurs. This is just a basic, I'll wear them riding, and if I have to jump off in the mud and do a bunch of other different stuff, work with some cattle, I don't care. So moving on from that, I'm going to go into a completely <clears throat> different type of spur. Now this, this type of spur that I'm riding, um, I did not get from a farm and ranch store. You can. My uh, girl has a set of spurs that I gave her that I got from uh, a farm and ranch store, which is very similar to this. So you can find these at farm and ranch stores. So you've got those two types. Now I'm going to get into a spur that's completely different <coughs> that I'd like to distinguish from horse riding spurs. So for you guys that are just getting into riding, working with horses, moving up to using spurs, um, don't buy these and expect them to be good horseback spurs. So here they are. <coughs> First thing we'll take a look at is the angle that these are set up at. <clears throat> you see how a normal riding spur, the shank comes straight down. These are extremely angled. Okay, there's the first difference. The second difference is these rowels lock. You only have a quarter inch a turn here. So, <clears throat> these are not horseback spurs at all. These have a 23 degree angle offset shank. These are for bull riding. <clears throat> I see them, I see these spurs sell a lot <clears throat> in farm and ranch stores. You know, you'll get four or five different styles of bull riding spurs right next to the horseback spurs. Some people may not know the difference. Now when you get them <clears throat> in a farm and ranch store, a lot of times they won't lock. So people will think, okay, well they, they must be a horseback spur. But if you're, if you're looking at a spur that has an angle, <clears throat> instead of coming straight down, you're looking at a bull riding spur. So, one, the rowels on these are a little aggressive, even brand new. <clears throat> Without this style of rowel, they're aggressive for horseback riding. Also, when you're riding a horse, <clears throat> you don't want to constantly be digging into your horse with spurs. The spur is just to give a little bit of pressure and for them to understand that signal. If you're riding with an extremely angled spur like this, you're gonna be constantly digging into your horse with your spur, and that's absolutely counterproductive. So to overview this entire thing, you have your basic smaller entry level spur. Little bit of tooling, no spur lip, short shank, little rowel. Moving up into just your standard horseback spur. And then moving into the spurs that you will find commonly that you don't want to have. And that would be your bull riding spur. <clears throat> 